Now, I can understand why some people are sitting around going, for God's sake, why can't we go and have a picnic with six people today? Why do we have to wait 34 days until we do that? Well, you know what? Yesterday, we didn't have any of this. Last week, we didn't have any of this. The week before that, we were hearing that we might have to be uh, socially distancing from each other for the rest of the year. We were hearing that there might be another lockdown coming in the summer. I'm saying that this at least is a step in the right direction. We've now got some plans. We've now got some dates by which we can actually start thinking about doing things. Some people will be happy that they can at least and at last now go and book some kind of summer holiday. And so what? If things are not going as quickly as we would like them to, at least they're going somewhere. Let's talk to William Pluston, leader of the Social Democratic Party, a man uh, who's always been a bit sceptical of the lockdown measures uh, and has always been very sensibly questioning them. William, a very good morning to you. Welcome. Morning, Mike. I don't know whether you share my view or Julia's view that, uh, you know, things are at least looking up uh, or things should be a lot better. Well, last time I was on uh, just over a week ago, I said that obviously fatigue was setting in and uh, people needed hope uh, and that Boris should back the vaccine. And I, I think I urged him to take a win from where we are. Yes. With nearly 18 million people vaccinated and, all, and the key groups vaccinated. Mm. Um, I think he's taken a score draw here. Uh, like you, I agree that the sequence it would have always been a sequence. That's very sensible. Uh, but I think he's been a little bit overcautious. I still think some of the rules that we have now, uh, just today, still don't make very much sense. And if you had a, a more nuanced uh, approach to this, you'd, you'd certainly be allowing people to play tennis or uh, play golf or outside. Golf it seems to be, yeah. yeah, it makes no sense at all. That is just uh, irrational not to put, let people do that. Mm. I think the, 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 the hardest thing about the, uh, the, the, the sequence um, is the hospitality industry. Um, what he said is that, yeah, okay, some pubs have beer gardens, fair enough, and that's seven weeks from now. But basically, he said to pubs up and down the country in most restaurants, it's a full quarter. I mean, you've got to wait, wait a full financial quarter, basically, 12 weeks, best part of 12 weeks before you can open. And I've reminded people before, but when uh, pubs were opened uh, on, the, on American Independence Day last mm. year, they traded with... Uh, appropriate measures taken inside the pubs for 14 weeks before the death rate uh, went up mm. which involved you know uh, over a billion visits now people in that industry are saying well we've done what the what the government asked us we proved the point that we could trade uh, um, you know safely uh, and yet they've got to wait um, you know full financial quarter before they're open mm. so you know, I, I, I but in, in general Mike I, mean, I think people should be happy that we've got um, a sequence now and a, and, a, and a roadmap out of it and spring is um, coming and the government can't stop the spring no and I think the government also can't stop the kind of the momentum that will be built up by the people because I think in mm -hmm. the end they keep saying it even though it doesn't appear to be the case that they do kind of govern by consent and they do govern by public opinion and they do try to represent uh, what people want and do what people want and i think mm. as we go closer towards you know the end of this month which is only next week after all as we go through the middle of march and the numbers that we see keep falling you know tumbling like crazy in terms of mm. the uh, you know the numbers of people being admitted to hospital the numbers of people dying all of that you know, and the numbers of people getting vaccinated, there will be a sort of inexorable, I think, route move towards speeding things up. Well, you'd like to think so, Mike, but actually uh, on the government's language, uh, that can't happen, actually, because the language is no earlier than. So the, the key dates they've yeah, put... Yeah, but I, ha I had this conversation with somebody yesterday afternoon, William, after Boris got his, uh, got his uh, speech in uh, the House of Commons. And, yeah, but, you know, why would you believe everything or anything that they say? Because almost everything that they have said has turned out yeah. not to be the case, you know? So, I mean, yeah. I thought the fact that they've used those words, fine, but they can yeah. change them. They can, but I think in real, I think that's quite unlikely to happen. I mean, the, I, think, I, I think if we put it this way, I, from what's been published now, I'd sort of take what they've got. And I just don't want it to get worse. So, I mean, but I, I believe in the vaccine. I mean, largely the data that's coming out, the, the, the study that came, the data that came out of Scotland a few days ago about the uh, efficacy of the Astra vaccine in mm. particular, was incredibly encouraging. I mean, this is a, this is a great jab. Yeah. And, you know, the rollout uh, is working. I just, I, I, as I say, I think they're just being a, a little bit harsh um, and, and as I say, unnuanced and irrational in certain areas, mm. and certainly just just the it's brutal. I mean, what they're doing to the hospitality industry is 
brutal. And remember, uh, it will mean that the Chancellor next uh, week will inevitably have to extend furlough. So the, the drag anchor effect of the debt we're building up, you know, is going to be very, very significant. Mm. I mean, it's effectively going to be a quarter yeah. more of these measures. So it's, these things, these things do have effects. And as I say, I think um, he's been, he's taken a score draw rather than taken the win. Yes. And I mean, interestingly, I've got quite a few tweets coming in already today. Dean um, has texted in today. He says, I'm a cabbie in Abingdon, Oxfordshire, uh, has got eight pubs, five haven't got a beer garden, probably 10 restaurants, but only one has facilities to serve outside. These draconian measures are utterly ludicrous uh, from a ludicrous uh, government. And I think a lot of people will see that that is a problem for many of the hospitality businesses that can't basically sell stuff outside. I mean, you know, we've had for a long time, I think even just le leading up to Christmas, an awful lot of pubs pubs and restaurants in uh, in this area here in London were serving mm. takeaway drinks so people could go and kind of you know get themselves a drink hang about outside you know it was a relatively civilized thing to do uh, that mm. all stopped um, just before Christmas I think the weekend before Christmas um, mm. but I suspect that that will begin to come back because if you're allowed to go for a picnic for example uh, according mm. to this in 34 days then what's mm. to stop a bar from selling you a drink well, a bar could sell you a drink, and, and the ones that can probably will, will legally do that will. But as I say, people don't stop drinking. I mean, the, the, the effect of, of closing pubs has been that people have been drinking at home, and there is evidence that deaths due to excess drinking, uh, you know, uh, the evidence is that, that that's increasing. So, again, these things aren't uh, cost-free. I think a criticism from the start that you and many other people and ourselves in the Social Democratic Party have been urging the government to take a more a broader view on all these things uh, but they, they i don't think they will do i think we're we're set now with the roadmap and I, I as i say i hope it just comes in i mean it's interesting they have the government have there's some interesting things came out of yesterday's announcement certainly on on sort of covid passports uh they're you know calling them something else on their covid status ver verification certificates or whatever and that's a very very contentious issue uh i i can understand the government being cautious about this because it, it puts a disparity, basically. It divides your population into two, those that are, are lucky enough to have the vaccine and are protected and have gone for it and get their passport. I mean, a point that was made to me by a, a, a friend, you know, who's, who's had his vaccine, well, I've had my vaccine, why can't I go to the pub or the shop? Yes, well, exactly right. And I think, um, you know, there is this inexorable move, as I keep saying, towards you know, normality. And I think the fact that they've even said, because they didn't have to say uh, that by June, all of the measures that we have put into place will have disappeared, you know, because that is a pretty bold statement really as well, considering that only a couple of weeks ago, they were talking about keeping social distancing and mask wearing all the way through perhaps until the end of the year. I mean, I'm assuming you know, a lot of people that I've, I've spoken to since yesterday talked about booking holidays in July. Um, I presume by that, that they won't be quarantining people anymore. Um, well, I think if the wheel comes off um, something, it'll be holidays in July abroad. I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm, you know, it, 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 the vaccine rollout uh, in the EU is is uh, been a complete failure, and the um, scare stories that frankly have come from the uh, top politicians in Germany and France about the Astra vaccine have actually been uh, fatal to their own vaccine rollout. Now people are uh, refusing. Uh, in quite high numbers to take the vaccine. So they've actually shot themselves. They've, they've ruined their own program, not mm. only with the bungling of the ordering of that. So I, I think if you think that uh, you could safely book um, an EasyJet or Jet2 flight to Spain or France or Italy uh, in July, go for it. But I think you're very likely to get your money back, I think. Yes, well, of course, what we don't often address is the fact that in other countries of Europe, they're in a worse place than we are uh, in terms of some some of the measures they've got into place. You know, I mean, you can apparently go and find a bar that's open in France or in Spain, um, but there's a curfew in place in most most parts of the country, um, and you can't go anywhere without having a piece of paper in your hand, and you can't enter any of those countries without a test. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very worried about it, and I, I, I as I say, I'm I'm worried about it for for French and uh, Italian citizens. I think, in particular, in France. Uh, they haven't really had um, the, the sort of second or third wave that we've had. Mm. But, but, you know, epidemiologists in France are, are warning Macron that it's going to come. And because, as I say, they haven't got their, their skates on uh, to vaccinate the population. Actually, vax resistance to vaccinations from the general population in France is very high. 
So frankly, I, I think it looks a bit of a mess for continental holidays. Um, I, I've always thought that the government should, it's very sensible for the government to try and prioritize the domestic economy. Uh, I'm not arguing for some sort of closed down autarky uh, like New Zealand, who are in a different position to us anyway. But I think it, it certainly going forward, um, it, it, I'd be cautious actually, um, uh, if, I were, if I were in government of allowing too much international travel into zones in Europe that were had un, uh, you know, largely unvaccinated mm. populations and could be a reservoir for infection. Remember that one of the reasons we started quite badly in the UK is that we were seeded from th at least three or four different places. We were yeah. seeded simultaneously from Spain and France and Italy. And, uh, you know, and, and we didn't know that until it became apparent. But I think they need to be very careful about that, Mike. Yes, and I think that's true. I mean, the trouble with, I mean, if I lived in New Zealand, I wouldn't be too happy with their government either because they shut down Auckland the other week because they had yeah. three new cases. And then I found out that actually the number of deaths in New Zealand from COVID is five altogether. I mean, that's it. And you're thinking yeah. to yourself, if you were running a business in Auckland and they were telling you not to run it because of three new cases, you'd be pretty upset, I would imagine. Yeah, the Australians and New Zealanders are in a, a slightly different situation to us. And there's certainly the threshold um, before the government takes uh, strict action is different there than it is here. You mm. know, if one, uh, if they, t you know, have one case in Melbourne, then Melbourne has a mini uh, lockdown as well. Yeah. They are in a slightly different position though, Mike. They are geographically isolated. You only have to look at the um, flight radar map to see that, yes, they get plenty of flights, but it's not like, uh, the situation, we, situation we're in in London. I mean, you, you literally, we're a you know, highly connected society. We, we, we were seeded with coronavirus before they were. Yes. And so and you've got to remember also, from their point of view, they, uh, they can feed themselves. I mean, they, the Australian economy domestically is open. Mm. Uh, the bars are open and, and sporting events are happening. And, uh, you know, I suppose if I were in Australia, and many of my family are Australian, I, I, would, I would be quite happy to, to live a, a, a sort of autarky, mm. closed borders. As I say, they can feed themselves. It's probably been the best place to be in the last 18 months. I suppose so. But I mean, the problem I've got with Britain being described as the sort of centre of the travel hub of the world in some way, shape or form, where are all these bloody people going? You know, what are they doing? Why are they travelling through London to go somewhere in the middle of a worldwide pandemic when nobody's supposed to be going anywhere? Yeah, I mean, we were, we were I, I think when the public inquiry happens and, and, and the academic papers appear, there's no doubt that we were too open um, in, in uh, February and March. Right. And as I say, if there's a trade off, there are always trade offs. You know, politicians are quite um, disinclined to admit the trade offs sometimes. And we've tried to be honest about it from the mm. start. If there's a trade off, you should prioritize the domestic economy. Keep that open. And if necessary, be a little bit cautious about who uh, who goes where and how. Um, but, you know, I, I, let's be optimistic, Mike. I think there's been a lot of gloom. Um, you know, we've got a roadmap. Let's hope they stick to it. As I say, it can be criticised, but, um, uh, you know, let's hope by the time we can go to the pub in, 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 in 12 weeks' time, there are still some pubs open. <laughs> Very much so. Let's hope so. Let's you and I perhaps uh, manage to meet somewhere as well, even yeah. though you're a long way away at the moment. William Cluston, thank you very much indeed, leader of the Social Democratic Party, uh, talking there uh, about how he's slightly less enthusiastic than I am about what's happened, uh, but nevertheless understands and gets the fact that we are at least moving in the right direction. I know that some of you are going to be saying to me, well, that's all very well for you to say. However, there are plenty of businesses which won't last until May, which can't keep closed until April, which have to be opened now. Well, I think we continue to use our uh, best endeavours uh, to put pressure on the government to make things move a little bit quicker. I mean, even Neil Ferguson, uh, who's not exactly somebody uh, who is everybody's favourite cup of tea, has said that the government could move quicker. I think they will. I think they can. And I think they must. But nevertheless, I don't think what happened yesterday is a cause uh, to be concerned about. I think it's a cause for celebration, isn't it?